be welcomed and we're grateful for whatever we have. Our harmless and providers by the chain, Keith and Bill. By the chain is our associate pastor and nun celebrated by Father Mike. So we welcome them to do our mass and bless us today. Thank you. The processional hymn is number 475, Come Now, Almighty King, number 475. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, as you heard in the uh, opening announcements, uh, I'm not a substitute priest. I'm your new associate pastor. Uh, and it's great to be back here with you all. I was here last summer as Deacon Shane for about six weeks, and it's an honor and a joy to now be called Father Shane. So please keep me in your prayers and I'm honored to be your associate. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This time we will have liturgy of the word for the children, so come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. Good job. How, how many of y'all have ever been on a boat? Has anybody ever been on a boat? Yeah. Do you wear your life jackets? Good. You should. Always wear your life jackets. Yeah. You have a question? We'll go ahead. You're keeping their time, but go ahead. Um, last night I was going on a big boat that had a hotel. You went on a big boat with a hotel? Yeah. I need a vacation with you. Well, Jesus is on a boat in today's gospel. And he's taking a nap, and something's going to wake him up, and you're going to find out what it is, okay? So go in God's peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead. There you go. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? And, thick and when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door? And said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be still. The word of the Lord. high the waves of the sea that 
and they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Give thanks to the because of the calm and he led them to the haven they desired let them thank the Lord for his mercy his wonders for the children of men give thanks to the A reading from the letter, second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us, and once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him for whom their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. And even, we, even if we once knew Christ to the flesh, yet now we know him no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things are to come. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from our Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with them. A violent squall came up, and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, 
Do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning, everybody. It's great to be back, as I said earlier. And again, Father Martin, thank you. Uh, as pastor for your hospitality and your warm welcome to me and to Deacon Bill. The two of them have worked very hard to make sure my transition's been smooth, and it has, so thank you. And to all the parish staff, uh, the the parishioners as well, it's just great to be back. It feels like home, and it's so good to be here. When the archbishop or his representative called Father Martin, he could have said no when they said, we want to send you Father Shane, Uh, and I'm so glad you said yes. So it is good. It's good to be here. It's also appropriate and no coincidence, and it's pretty awesome, that my first weekend in the parish as your associate is on Father's Day. That's a pretty cool feeling. My family was here last night, my mom and dad and my sister and aunt and two cousins. And you all were very welcoming to them. Now, all you mothers know you really care about your children, you really worry about them, where they are, where they're going to be, who's going to be with them, and your hospitality uh, and your warm welcome, you melted my mother's heart, and she's pretty confident and comfortable that I'm where I belong. Uh, So thanks for doing that to my family. You know, about this time last year, Father Martin and I arrived at St. James for the first time together. He is your pastor and me as the deacon. And if you remember his homily, which I do, and I remember a great line, a very profound line, I hope you didn't forget it, he said, My role as pastor is to make sure that you get to heaven. That's pretty awesome. And it got me thinking, well, gosh, what is my role as the associate pastor? And it hit me. It's to make sure he gets to heaven. (laughs) We've got a lot of work to do. We'll get you there, Father, I promise. But seriously, think about it. Good, I'm glad I'm here. (laughs) Think about it on Father's Day. I've only been a priest for three weeks now. Father Martin's been a priest over 25 years. I hope that when you look at us, you see a father. You see someone who loves you, who cares for you, who wants nothing but the best for you. You see men who have given their lives up for Christ for each and every one of you. That you see Christ in us when we're standing at the altar and when we're sitting in the confessional, forgiving you of your sins. And when you look at us, you see broken, sinful, normal human beings. We're all in this together. It's no coincidence that today being Father's Day that we're here celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass as your associate, and as your pastor. And speaking of Christ, what a great miracle story we've heard in the Gospel of Mark. There Jesus is, just taking a little nap. He's probably tired. He's worn out, doing a lot of ministry. He just wanted about 10, 15-minute cat nap. And the storm started to arise, and the wind started to blow, and the water began to capsize the boat. And so out of fear, his disciples woke him up. I don't know about you, but when I'm taking a nap, I really don't like to be woken up. And they said this. They said, Jesus, they said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now think about that for a moment. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They didn't say, do something about it. They didn't say, Lord, make it stop. They didn't say, my Lord and my God, I believe, now help me. No. They simply shared their anxieties, their worries, and their concerns. That's a great model for each and every one of us. How many times do we go to prayer 
and we say, Lord, I need this. Lord, I want that. Lord, if you just make this happen, I promise I'll go to Mass more. I promise I'll pray more. How many times do we negotiate with God in our prayers? The disciples didn't do that. They simply shared their anxieties. And what did Christ say to the winds when he woke up into the storm? Quiet. Be still. Jesus' true divinity was shown that very moment when he said, Quiet. Be still. It reminds me, and it was great that my dad was here last night, there was a hunting story that I shared, and I'll share it with you. When I, now, kids, listen up, especially if you're between the ages of 10 and 13, now, or 7 or 8 to 13. At this age, you probably think your parents are very annoying right now. You don't want to be around them. They bug you. They get on your nerves. You don't want to be around them. So listen up. When I was about 7 or 8, my dad took me hunting for the very first time. And we went to Muldraw Hill. You don't know where that is, near Fort Knox in here in Louisville? And I was about seven or eight, and it was a cold a Saturday morning, and I'll, I'll never forget it. We were about there 20 minutes, and I was bored. And I started making some noise, and he'd say, Shane, shh. And then I'd say, Dad, I'm cold. And he said, well, your mother should have dressed you warmer. <laughs> and then I said, Dad, I'm hungry. And he said, Shane, we just ate. And I said, Dad, there's no deer around. Let's just go. He said, Shane, and I swear, very similar. He said, Shane, quiet. Be still. Well, I was bored. I didn't have a rifle. I was just there to be with my dad and my uncle. So I went and found a stick. And I started hitting the ground with it, hitting trees with it, and breaking it apart. And he said, Shane, you're going to scare away every deer in the area. Quiet. Be still. Well, finally, about 20 minutes after that, a deer showed up. And I'm sitting there playing in the dirt, doing something. And he said, Shane, look, there's a deer. And I went, where? <laughs> and he said, the deer's head just kind of looked up. He said, cover your ears. I'm going to take the shot. So he aimed the rifle, and bam, the deer ran off. Well, my dad was a police officer in Jefferson County for almost 27 years. I thought he would be able to hit a deer from 100 yards. So I just rolled on the ground laughing. I thought, we've been here for an hour. There was a deer, and you missed. Well, we found the deer in the blood trail, and he hit it right dead center. As a child, I didn't want to be there. I didn't get why I was there. I was cold and bored and tired. But how appropriate on Father's Day. Now as an adult, I get it. I know why I was with my father and my uncle that day. And I hope you've had experiences like that with friend, family and friends, with fathers and father figures, where you were able to just be quiet and be still, even if you didn't want to be there. Now you might be thinking, okay, you tell me, Father Shane, in this world where I can be quiet and still, we're in a culture of noise. Everywhere we turn, there's noise. There's Facebook and social media. There's the internet and music. We're running around from this practice to that practice, from this recital to that recital. We're doing homework. We're t studying abroad. We're doing all kinds of things. Where can I be quiet and still? I hope when you come here to St. James, when you come to Mass, you find a little bit of peace, a little bit of quiet, some stillness. Now, if you've looked at the news, that tragedy in South Carolina, you would think you could be able to come to your own place of worship in peace. But we know all too well that it takes one person to disrupt that silence, and tragedy occurs. I hope and pray that you find peace, that you can find some quiet in your life. Maybe when you're driving in between practices and dropping the kids off at this camp and doing this and doing that, shut off the radio. Quiet. Be still. And don't demand anything from God. Don't negotiate with God. Just sit there in silence and in peace and share your anxieties. If anyone among you has no anxieties or worries at all, please stand up. We're all worried. We're all anxious people. Share those anxieties with the Lord. He'll take care of it. Another great thing to do, it's a great practice for the, cl the clergy. We, are pr we promise to pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, and the lay faithful, you're encouraged to pray it with us as well. But at night prayer at Compline, there's a beautiful prayer. 
and it's this. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep. That awake we may keep watch with Christ and asleep rest in his peace. Maybe before you go to bed, just a couple of minutes, thank God for your day. Thank God for all the many blessings. And just share your anxieties. We're a busy people. It's hard to find rest and peace. But God knows our hearts better than we do. Trust in him. Pray for me. Pray for Father Martin and all the parish staff here at St. James. We've got a lot of work to do. This past week, I've been going nonstop. And I'm loving every minute of it. Pray that we have the grace to find peace and quiet as well. So that we can better serve you, the people of God. Share your anxieties. Trust in the Lord. And I promise he will calm the storms of your life. Brothers and sisters, let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and new. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Trusting in the Lord's presence among us, especially during times of distress and fear, let us confidently turn to the Father who hears all our prayers. For all those who are entrusted with leadership positions in the church, that they may continue to lead the flocks entrusted to their care with faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations that delivered from all turmoil, all people may be able to serve God in freedom of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love for them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in this sacred place by faith and devotion, and by the love and reverence for God, that we may continue to be good and faithful servants and stewards. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our covenant churches and the people of St. Mark's in Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the upcoming fortnight for freedom, that all the faithful will have the freedom to bear witness to the truths of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For all fathers, paternal and spiritual, and for those who fulfill the role of father to those who turn to them, that they may look to and model St. Joseph, the patron saint of all fathers. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, that they may see the face of Christ in the kingdom of heaven. We pray especially for the intention of this Mass, Barbara McFarlane Mathis. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we turn to you, our true and loving Father, who never leaves us, especially during times of trouble. Hear the prayers we have brought before you this day, spoken and unspoken, confident that you will hear them, for we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 646. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 646. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, 
we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the Saint James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And we make our intercession during this holy mass for your beloved daughter, Barbara. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of God's peace and love.
The communion hymn is number 840, Shepherd of Souls, number 840.
renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. I want to add my own uh, word of welcome, especially to uh, all of our guests this morning. We're really delighted that you're here. Uh, thanks for your presence and participation. We're going to have a reception with some good eats, uh, Wolf Four, in honor of Father Shane. So uh, come on over and uh, have a little lunch with us. And I want to say a happy Father's Day, too. Uh, Father is going to uh, pronounce a blessing over all of us in just a few minutes. So I hope that you have a great day uh, with your family and with your children. Uh, I'll go home uh, this afternoon to be with my dad. I know Father Shane will be as well. On May 30th, the church received a great gift in the priesthood of Father Shane Duvall. Today, we receive a great gift as he comes to share with me and to be a good shepherd uh, to you and to spend these days uh, among us. So we're honored that he's here. I'm grateful that he's here. And I just have one question. Any idea how long it'll take you to get me to heaven? <laughs> I'd rather not say. <laughs> he's a prudent young priest. <laughs> so God bless you all, and we'll, we'll see you next door. Thank you, Father. Thank you all. Yeah, the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for our fathers, those to whom you have entrusted the responsibility to provide loving protection of their families and guidance of their children. We thank you also for our deacons, priests, and bishops whose spiritual fatherhood is so vital to the faith of your people. May our fathers imitate the courage of Abraham, David, and Joseph, and all the Holy Fathers of the past, in providing wise counsel to the children you have given to their care. And may our spiritual fathers be guided by the examples of Saints Peter and Paul, all the apostles, and their saintly successors. Assist all fathers of families, all spiritual fathers, and all Christian men, that through your grace they may steadily grow in holiness and in knowledge and understanding of your truth. May they generously impart this knowledge to those who rely on them. We ask your blessing on all those to whom you have entrusted fatherhood. May your Holy Spirit constantly inspire them with justice and mercy, wisdom and strength, fidelity and self-giving love. May they receive your grace abundantly in this life, and may they look forward to eternal joy in your presence in the life to come. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The recessional hymn is number 614, O God, our help in ages past, number 614. 